Hi, session 9, programming for the Hawken Continuum through the Egan Matrix. I'm not quite ready for the AES presentation, so today I thought I'd talk about the single and cascaded filters of the editor, how they're used, and more importantly, what they might sound like. Now, when you take a look at filters, they're typically defined by circuit diagrams and equations of one sort or another. So uh, it's best for us to maybe spend a little bit of time. Let's take a look at this. Are you kidding me? Let's not. I mean, we're musicians here. These equations, frankly, are very important if you are programming computer music applications where you can roll your own filters, but we don't care about that. Uh, we want to know how these filters really sound and maybe what the uh, sound looks like if we can visualize it. So let's take a little look at what we need to talk about for filters, at least as uh, applied to the simple filters section of the Egan matrix. Uh, there's also biquadratic filters, uh, the, the, the big banks that we're not going to go into here, uh, as those are banks of filters, and that is a totally separate presentation, two or three even. Now, uh, when we take a look at what a filter normally does, I mean, it's going to pretty much either att attenuate or amplify some frequency band that you uh, specify around some cutoff frequency. We're going to, uh, for our uh, presentation, use a fixed cutoff frequency for most of it so we can kind of compare apples to apples as we rotate through uh, the filter options in the e Egan matrix. But a few simple things to, uh, to uh, get, get in our minds before we go to that. And one is a filter typically has some band that it's going to pass through the filter, a pass band, or it could be bands, depending upon what kind of filter it is. Um, it'll have a cutoff frequency that's specified, the frequency around which the uh, cutoff uh, happens and your attenuation happens, basically. Now, some people call the, uh, the attenuation profile a transition band, and after it's done, a stop band. Other people use the stop band as to notate the transition band and the stop band doesn't really matter all we really care about is that there's some frequencies we're going to pass there's going to be a cutoff frequency and then there's going to be some slope defined by the filters action and that slope will change depending upon the kind of filter we use um, and the Egan matrix actually lets us define uh, simple filters and cascaded filters, and when we choose those cascaded filters, this slope is going to change depending upon the cascade level that we set. Now, the only other thing for right now that I think we need to be concerned with is around this cutoff frequency, and filters typically don't cut off, you know, right off a cliff at the cutoff frequency. Th there's a transition around that cutoff, and very frequently, you'll define things that will amplify the area around that cutoff frequency in this bottom left-hand uh, uh, drawing. We see the uh, low-pass filter without um, this amplification at the cutoff. And uh, here we have a uh, the same low-pass filter with this amplification, this little bump where frequencies are uh, amplified around that cutoff, and this is typically called resonance when you amplify that section. And some people even use the term Q to, uh, to mean a similar thing. So those are the only things we need to know in terms of filters. All right, We're going to define them in terms of an amplitude uh, of the signal and a frequency of the signal. And so let's get right to it now that we've got that out of the way, and we want to get rid of that one forever. Okay, we're in the Egan matrix now, and I've written a little program here that's going to help us uh, use these filters. And to really see what they're doing, it's going to be easier for us to use noise, 
because noise is a full spectrum sound and when we bring up the spectrum analyzer that I have here you'll be m m it'll be much easier for you to see what these filters filters are doing now noise is very important especially in Egan matrix programming you see it used all the time in all different kinds of ways it could be used say uh, to create a breath component for a wind sound it could be used to create wind like sounds rustling sounds there's beach sounds um, it could also be used very frequently to create kind of buzzing sounds and even slight imperfections uh, in a uh, an instrument that otherwise would sound too perfect where you want to try and get a little bit of grit going in there maybe adding a little noise to simulate the vibration of a of a bow on a string you know slipping of the bow or something like that uh, noise can be used all over the place for all kinds of things so don't get the wrong idea a lot of people think uh, noise is not music noise in fact can be very much music now this program that I have here it does a couple things first I route some noise uh, from the fingerboard right out the left and right channels this is just routing the pure noise white noise which is pretty much a uh, a totally random signal content uh, um, at a constant power spectrum uh, so you'll see pretty much you want to see every frequency that you can hear at, at a same power level that's kind of what you expect for with pure white noise now pure white noise is not attainable uh, in a digital model it's very difficult to get in any model but what the Egan matrix produces is perfectly fine and uh, let's just press the, the fingerboard and hear what our kind of base white noises because this is what we're going to feed into all the filters and see how it this noise profile changes as we apply different filters to it okay so there's our basic white noise you can hear there's no real frequency that pops out of there and the high component is about sounds about the same level as the low and the mid component. It's pretty much our base noise, which can be used uh, here and there. But for the most part, when we want to use noise in the Egan matrix, we're going to filter it in one way or another to make it a lot more useful and musical. Okay, uh, a couple other things to, that we'll just uh, look at this program here. Uh, there are five f uh, banks defined that w we know from earlier presentations can either be defined as an oscillator of some sort or a filter. Uh, when we bring up the empty patch that this was based on, the, l the last two banks here, four and five, are defaulted to low-pass filters, but you can change that to any one of a number of kinds of filters in the Egan matrix. Now, there's two basic categories of them. Uh, two pole filters and single pole filters and then the difference between them is a, t a two pole filter will uh, have a slope uh, uh, cutting off at 12 dB per octave and a single pole filter cuts off at a less steep slope of 6 dB per octave and if you don't know what that means it doesn't matter we'll see that in a second so let's go through the different types of uh, two-pole 12 d per octave uh, uh, filters there's a low pass filter that will pass your low frequencies a high pass filter pass your high frequencies there's a band pass filter that will pass frequencies or around a band you defined you know a frequency band there's shelving low pass and high pass filters these filters typically do not filter all the high or low component out of the signal it, it will kind of keep some of the filter component at a single level hence the term shelving there's a notch filter that will kind of put a gap somewhere in your spectrum that you specify and there's an all pass filter and you might think all pass filter what in the heck is that useful for why don't I just use the noise well all pass filters are indeed passing all 
your frequencies, but it turns out they also change phase. So these filters are typically used in recording to uh, do, you know, phase correction. And uh, we probably won't be able to hear any of that in th th when we're just passing noise, but they are useful. And then there's uh, two single pole filters to find. You can only use a single pole on the low pass and the high pass filters. And so those are those uh, complete are simple filters. Um, y there are also these bi quadratic banks of filters we talk about that are much more complicated. You see, they have a lot more inputs, and those we'll talk about later. Now, one other feature of the filters is that you can define them as a single filter or you can cascade multiple filters and as you cascade them you basically um, create steeper and steeper slopes so if our base filter is the two base two pole filter um, uh, attenuates at 12 db per octave then the uh, <coughs> the cascade 2 attenuates at 24 dB, 36 dB, and the cascade 4 has the steepest slope attenuating at 48 dB per octave. And each of the filters can e be set in any of these four modes. So quite a lot of options on filters. Now, what do we send into the filter? Okay, in our case here, it's pretty simple. There's only three things you have to worry about. Obviously, the first is the input audio source, and we're just going to be feeding it noise in our examples here. Now, remember, noise is a full-spectrum sound, so it can become quite loud if you do certain things with it. Uh, I always uh, suggest that if you're going to play around with noise, make sure, again, that your gain is turned down if you're not sure what you're doing and start by putting in small values. Um, you'll see a noise value of 0.25 can actually create quite a big sound. Um, the next, your cutoff frequency. All right, that's going to be some frequency you define. It could be X uh, on the fingerboard, so the cutoff frequency changes as you move your finger, which is quite common in a lot of filter sounds. But since we want to make a comparison of these filters and do it apples to apples, we'll use one kilohertz. Uh, one, one kilohertz tone is the cutoff frequency in our noise uh, pattern that we're going to send to the filter. All right, now the important bandwidth uh, input. This is going to control what that resonance function that we talked about at the beginning. If you set this value less than 1, you're going to increase resonance, narrow the bandwidth around that cutoff frequency, and we'll see, we're going to see little bumps uh, occurring around that as we decrease the resonance. If you increase that number greater, greater than 1, uh, y you're going to basically lessen the slope around the cutoff, uh, and that we'll see as well. All right, so that pretty much defines everything we need to know about using the filters. What do they really do? That's our next job. So before we uh, look at that, I'll just explain to you what's going on in our little program here. Um, as I press the fingerboard, we'll just get that white noise. I have a pedal set up so that I will, uh, when I press that, it will trigger the low-pass filter, the noise into the low-pass filter, whatever filter type I have set. Right. And I also have another pedal uh, set up, a continuous pedal, with this equation that will make my resonance go from 1 when... Uh, when the bandwidth set to 1, that's pretty much your full bandwidth you're setting in. As I make that go uh, down, that's what my uh, pedal will do here. You'll see I'll go from min resonance to max, which is actually sending a larger to smaller value into the uh, bandwidth parameter. I never want this to actually get to 0 or that I'll turn no uh, the, the whole thing off. I won't hear anything. And then I have another uh, control here, another a barrel set up. I just have a breath controller attached. When I blow on that, I'm going to increase that bandwidth values value. So you'll hear what happens when I um, 
you'll see when I, I blow that increases. So that in uh, increases the value and lessens the uh, slope of the filter. So we're ready to begin now. How do we listen to and visualize what's going on? And the simplest way to do that is to bring up a spectrum analyzer. And I have one running here. Uh, you can see that uh, my voice is actually triggering it right now. When I stop talking, that'll go down to some reasonable level that w w won't affect uh, the, uh, the patterns that we'll see. I, I have a cutoff switch I can even uh, do here. That'll bring it out if, if uh, the microphone out completely if we need to. All right, so let's begin. And w what we want to do is just l look at what white noise will look like on this, uh, on this graph. Okay, there I have a pause function. And you could see it's kind of as we expect. I'm not going to get a flat line all the way across. I'm, I have pretty much all of my frequencies in the, in the spectrum that I can hear. On the left axis, I have my um, decibel reading. And on the, uh, the bottom x-axis, I have my frequency uh, specifications, right, from 10 hertz to over around 20 kilohertz. So I'm pretty much covering the full range of human hearing here. And, I mean, the, the noise is, is going to oscillate. It's not going to be a flat line. But for our intents and purposes, we can treat this as a, a, a flat line. You'll see at the end here it kind of just tails off to nothing. I'm not 100% sure part of that is due to that's the, uh, the frequency uh, component that the continuum will support or this program might have uh, issues supporting frequencies higher than that. doesn't matter. Th that's beyond the range of human hearing. Okay, th so there's our basic noise. Right? Now, let's apply a filter to it and see what happens. Go back to our matrix. Let's set up first um, our low-pass filter, right? single, well, as a single filter, and I'm going to just set, uh, I set my one kilohertz cutoff frequency we'll use for everything, and initially I have uh, the resonance and the bandwidth at, at min, so nothing is going to be triggered on those, and I'm just going to have the base filter come in, base low-pass filter come into effect. Let's hear what that sounds like and see what it sounds like. Ah, okay, this is doing something different than the noise pattern we just looked at. And you can even hear if I uh, trigger the low pass, then the white noise. You can, you can easily hear that the high frequency component is, uh, is attenuated out of that. And uh, we can see here, too, my cutoff frequency at 1 kilohertz. After, the, after that, I kind of start to... Uh, attenuate. It even looks like it's attenuating a little bit before that, as we might expect. And uh, m my low frequency component is pretty much passed as is. And then I cut away. And this is supposed to be a uh, a two pole two pole twelve dB per, dB per octave filter. So let's just see if it's close to that. Um, One kilohertz to two kilohertz is obviously an octave. Here's 10 dB over here, and I don't know, that's about you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. This is an average line, so it's not going to be exact. So yeah, this is, this is sloping away at um, 12 dB per octave. Now, that's not something that you typically are going to know in your head. Oh, 12 dB per octave, I know what that sounds like. I think you're just going to have to experiment with different sounds on the continuum. You get a good idea. Uh, with what kind of filter uh, type, you know, sounds like what. All right, so we know what that sounds like and looks like. Let's do the next thing. Go back to my filter. And let's see what happens if I set this filter to cascade 2. I would expect a steeper slope now all right, at 24 dB per octave. Let's go back to our spectrum.
yeah, I can definitely see that this is a steeper slope. You know, I, I get a lot of rumbling down here, but um, down at 100 d minus 100 dB, 110 dB, that's not, that's not a frequency component you're really going to, going to hear uh, that much. So uh, I can see that my uh, cascading is in fact making the filter steeper. Let's go through and look at what that might be. Okay, for a cascade of three, go back. Yeah, hey, that's even steeper slope. All right, and. comparing it with white noise. And let's just go back and look at the full cascade 4 on this filter. There we are, cascade 4. We'll go back, turn that on, and there we go with the steepest uh, cascade. Now, if I let me just do this a few times. You'll see, because it's averaging out here, it's not going to really be uh, the same pattern, uh, but the slope is pretty consistent at that steep um, maximum f slope for the four cascade. All right. Good. Let's go back and play with some other parameters so you can see what's going on when we look at resonance. Set ourselves back to the single filter. Oops. And now what I'll do is I'll uh, trigger the uh, pedal that's going to increase resonance, decrease bandwidth on my filter. Okay, let's, oops, All right, go back. All right, there's our low pass. Yeah, you can see that that, that I do in fact when I did that ha uh, have a uh, a hump that's starting to form around my cutoff frequency, and when that value gets small enough, you'll actually hear the filter um, f giving you feedback, which s some uh, musicians uh, use effectively in uh, electronic music pieces. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can even see the cascading and that feedback starts creating uh, secondary uh, humps along the way. <laughs> Maybe not a sound I'm going to use that often, but uh, uh, overloading a filter like that is used all the time in electronic music. Alright, let's go back. We kind of know what that does. Let's take a look at the other function now. I have my breath controller that's going to uh, uh, increase the bandwidth and decrease that slope. So let's see what that happens when I do that. There, you can see when, when it's without that um, function, the slope is in fact steeper. When I increase the 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 uh, the bandwidth, uh, it uh, lessens. And obviously, it's already already starting to sound like a, a wind or an ocean or something like that. So. There you go. That's uh, uh, pretty much showing you the functions that you can apply to the filters. The only other thing maybe we'll talk about is let's just go through some of the other filter types and see what see what they do. Right. So let's go back to our trusty Egan matrix. We'll instead of a low pass filter, we'll do a high pass filter now. We'll keep it on the simple um, single filter. And we'll kick that in.
there you go. It's doing kind of what we expect. I have my high frequency component now, which is being maintained, and the low frequency is being attenuated, in this case, at 12 dB per octave. And obviously, you can kind of hear that's the high component of my white noise sound. White noise, high frequency filter. Um, useful. Um, uh, maybe low frequency filters are used a little more in the Egan matrix patches, but uh, hard to say there. Let's go and uh, play around with this a little bit. Maybe we can um, just look at what Cascade 4 on that might be. Let's turn it on. All right, even the steeper slope, as we saw, I, I have a you know a higher hiss going on there. That almost sounds like I'm frying up an egg in a hot griddle. Okay, um, back we go. Um, let's play around with go back to our sim single filter. Let's play around with resonance on a high pass filter. Okay, there, just like the low-pass one, I can see that hump forming when I, uh, when I lower that bandwidth value in the Egan matrix, and you can also, you could hear that it's kind of going into the overload mode as I make it very low value near zero. Um, could be a very useful effect, um, and uh, kind of nice the way it's easy to see this on, on this spectrum graph. All right. Let's continue through our filter set, bandpass filter. All right, let's see what that one sounds like. We'll um, reset our pedal there. Okay, now we have a bandpass uh, going on around the cutoff frequency. Let's look at that. Okay, at our, you know, lower slopes, we basically are going up to that cutoff and back down. So we're kind of passing that, that band around there. Now what I might do is um, do the same thing and maybe let's make cascade four on this and you'll see the slope go much faster and we should see that band uh, pop out a lot more. So let's go back here. We'll set our filter to the maximum cascade. We'll go back to our analyzer and wow yeah now that that band that we're passing is quite noticeable it's almost starting to take on a tone um, we can do the same thing and uh, use our resonance on that filter let's see what that might do Okay, so oh, we're set. All, all I had to do was trigger it and then put the resonance on. There, I really have a nice uh, uh, slope going, and you can easily see what it means now. Band pass. All right. If I... Uh, do the same thing and lessen the bandwidth. That hump should even itself out. Let's let's just do that a bit. Okay, take that and now we'll blow. That's doing kind of like what we expect when we increase the bandwidth. Okay. On we go. Next in our filter parade is a shelving low-pass filter. All right, let's see what that might look like. Oh. 
hey, there is a pretty good uh, representation of what we were talking about before. It's a low pass uh, <coughs> a, a f a filter that we are passing the low frequencies, but we're not attenuating the high frequencies completely. They've been shelved here on this kind of step ladder like f function. Um, this is on, I believe, we're still on uh, our Cascade 4 if we wanted to look at that on just a simple filter this shelf should be a little higher let's see what's going on there okay there you go and now you can really hear that I've attenuated the high frequencies a little bit but I can still really hear them it's not quite like the white noise you hear here but I can do a lot of things with uh, with these shelving filters. Wow, uh, almost too many possibilities here. Uh, you really have to experiment with these and figure out what they'll do for you. We haven't even talked about how these are used in, s in sound with pitched, uh, you know, material. All right, let's go on and look at our high shelving. We'll go in and turn the pause off. All right. Yeah, we see a similar thing going on here. The high frequencies are passed, um, and the low frequencies just attenuate a little bit. But a high frequency component tends to come out to your ear a little more than the low frequencies tend to. All right, and we can go to that filter, and let's turn on uh, Cascade 4 on that one. And you'll see. Oh, now we really can see the shelving going on, and just like with Cascade 4 at the other, we have the, the high component uh, maintained, and the lower component is shelved at a much lower level. Okay, we're coming to the end. I think you're saying thank God. Notch filter. Let's take a look at what that one is. Well, that's pretty easy to see. Uh, there's our notch uh, going uh, with the steep slope around one kilohertz. <laughs> I don't know with noise if you can really hear. You can hear it's different. But can you hear that it's just a notch there? Now, one thing you might do with this, uh, with some patches, is take some other filter and stick something else in where that notch is to, you know, fill in the gap and do something interesting. We can go back here. We were on f Cascade 4. If we go to single uh, filter, you'll see that that notch is not going to be as big. It's not, and it's it's so small, in fact. I don't hear really too much difference between that and the, uh, and, and the, the white noise. I mean, I can apply my, uh, my resonance to that. You can see applying the resonance increases the frequency content around the cutoff, which is basically taking our notch away. So that may not be the, uh, the thing I want to do in this case, but it might create an effect where I'm you know, just slightly notching and going back to more the uh, bass sound. That could be useful. All right, now... We've talked about that. Let's talk about the all-pass. Now, all-pass passes all frequencies, but remember, uh, it changes the phase, but we're not going to be able to really hear that very well uh, in white, white noise-like component. So here's our white noise. Here's our... Obviously, it's doing what we expect, passing all the frequencies, and... Uh, my ears aren't good enough to hear any 
you know, kind of phase relationship in that mass. So let's continue. We're almost done. Single pole, low pass filter. Now this one, remember, is going to attenuate at 6 dB per octave, not 12 dB. And we should see something like our original low pass filter, but with lesser slope. And let's do that. Okay, yeah, obviously I have my, I'm passing my low frequencies, and now I'm sloping down my, my attenuation at, I don't know, let's see what this would be, around 1 kilohertz uh, to, you know, yeah, it's about to 2 kilohertz. Uh, you know, the values are somewhere in here. Again, this is average, so it's kind of hard to say, but it's, it's around 6 dB, I guess. So uh, that's uh, my shell, uh, uh, excuse me, single pole filter. White noise. All right. We can do the same thing um, with uh, resonance. But it's not as noticeable um, in this in this filter. Uh, let's go finally to our final single pole high pass filter. This should be the opposite of what we just saw. To our okay, let's sure we have our high frequency component, and now we're it's much s slower slope, uh, you know, less steep slope uh, away. Now, you might not really be able to hear too much difference in uh, when just using noise uh, between some of these filter types, but it's very much easier to see what's going on when we use noise like this. I think that's about all we need to say for filters because the next step is to actually bring up an Egan matrix patch and see how this stuff is really applied. And that's, that's going to be the fun thing and the, the real proof of the pudding. So that's all we want to say about simple filters. Till the next time.